practice God's wisdom, which gives me success and victory in life. So within this seminar, you will learn 17 wise ways to daily outsmart diabetes. There's exercises, it's medicine. Wisdom, which we've been going over. Food, sleep, and positive attitude. And also dealing with gratitude and stress control and things like that. So the final thing that I want us to want to show you tonight has to do with understanding basics. I don't understand why the time and when to check blood glucose, take medication, walk, and eat is so important. Well, an intelligent person aims at wise action. And here's the wise action. Mimic God's design of the body. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And so, a person said, you know, walk, eat, check blood glucose, take medication at just the right time. You've got to be a kid. You've got to be. That sounds like you've got to change. Because you probably haven't been doing those routines. But you don't have those habits. But look at this. Finish your outdoor work and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. Now, you look at the background of that, that proverb there, and you think, okay, a person is building their house. Winter's approaching. Well, they started in the spring. Winter, you know, it's taken them quite a while. They're working on it. And then when it comes, winter, you know what they discover? They don't have any food to put on the table. They've got their house. They're sitting in the house, but there's no food. Why? Because they were to finish their outdoor work and then get their fields ready and then build their house. There's a sequence that takes place. And in God's design of the body, there is a sequence. And I think this kind of illustrates a sequence here. There's phase one insulin response. It's diminished in type two diabetes. Phase one. Did you know there was a phase one and a phase two? Yeah. Well, insulin is released. That is, that is stored up. You have these in the pancreas there. You have these little uh, circulatory, secretory, I don't even know how to pronounce it, visible. They contain insulin. I've read somewhere about 50 units, something like that. But they are what, when you first start eating and you have carbohydrates, glucose, it's that insulin that is stored up that begins to work immediately. For about the first 15 minutes. The rest of the body, we're going to go into this, starts manufacturing more insulin to meet what is needed. And so the body sequence, the body counts the carbs you eat and initially responds by releasing stored up insulin. Then it begins to manufacture the exact amount of insulin needed with the pancreas beta cells. Well, where, where's the location of the pancreas? We're getting there. Right there, behind the stomach. The pancreas, the islets of Langerhans, one million of them are in your pancreas. Each islet contains about 2,000 beta cells. Each islet contains, each islet contains about 2,000 beta cells. I guess I already said that. The beta cells produce insulin. And the word insulin is from a Latin root word meaning island. Some insulin is stored in these small sacs. And how important is the hormone insulin? Before insulin was discovered in 1921 by Dr. Frederick Banting, J.L. was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and the only thing they could do to survive was to starve, basically. Now, this little guy is uh, three years old. Three years old, and he's 15 pounds. He was one of the fortunate ones to get insulin, and within two months, his weight doubled. Almost doubled. Now, do you think insulin is important? It's pretty important, isn't it? 
Here is a video, an instructive video from Santa Fe uh, Aventus from five years ago. It kind of explains all of this. Let's uh, watch it. When you hear the word insulin, you may think of a drug taken by people who have diabetes. While this is true, what you may not know is that insulin is one of the many hormones created in the human body. Insulin is important to the body. It allows blood sugar, or glucose, to get into cells to provide them with energy. When you eat, your body breaks down food into glucose in your small intestine. This is your body's source of energy for everything it does, from working and thinking, to exercising and healing. Glucose travels through your bloodstream, looking for individual cells that need energy. For glucose to get into the cells, it requires insulin. Insulin is the key that unlocks cells for glucose to enter and deliver energy. When insulin arrives, it signals the cell to activate glucose transporters. These transporters pull glucose through cell walls. When glucose moves into the cell, it delivers energy. Insulin is normally produced in the pancreas by specialized cells called beta cells. When glucose enters your bloodstream, the pancreas matches it with the right amount of insulin to move glucose into your cells. In people with diabetes, this process doesn't work as it should. In type 1 diabetes, scientists believe the body's immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys beta cells in the pancreas. A person with type 1 diabetes loses the ability to produce insulin. In type 2 diabetes, the pancreas is not producing enough insulin to meet the body's needs. Over time, the amount of insulin typically becomes less and less. In some type 2 diabetes patients, cells build up a resistance to insulin. Even though there may be insulin in the bloodstream, it is not enough to unlock cells to allow glucose to enter. As a result, it takes more insulin to find the right key to unlock the cell for glucose. This makes it more difficult for cells to get the energy they need. When glucose can't get into cells, either because there isn't enough insulin or because the body is resisting it, glucose begins to build up in the bloodstream. As a result, all that energy is wasted. It does not get to cells where it is needed. Without glucose in your cells, they lack the energy they require to keep your body working. To keep glucose from building up in the bloodstream, an external supply of insulin may be needed. Because people with type 1 diabetes can't produce their own insulin, they must inject insulin several times every day or receive insulin through an insulin pump. Many people with type 2 diabetes take insulin too. Injected insulin acts on glucose in a similar way to insulin the body would produce if it could. Like the body's insulin, injected insulin helps reduce the amount of glucose in the bloodstream by getting it into cells where it is needed for energy. Possible side effects may include blood sugar levels that are too low, injection site reactions, and allergic reactions, including itching and rash. Tell your doctor about all other medicines and supplements you are taking because they could change the way insulin works. Glucose monitoring is recommended for all patients with diabetes. When carbs are eaten, God's intricate design to convert them to energy begins. The one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. So I want to give you the way to mimic God's design of the body here. Again, I praise you because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. So during the meal, the intestine absorbs glucose and delivers it to the blood in response to glucose absorption. In response to glucose absorption, the intestine secretes 
incretin hormones. And they're kind of like messengers. They go to the pancreas, they go to the beta cells, and they're going to tell the beta cells exactly how much glucose is out there. And that way, the right amount of insulin will be produced. To mimic God's design of the body is wise. Dr. Richard Beeser of the Joshua Diabetes Center writes this, that these beta cells are capable of measuring the blood glucose level within seconds, with an accuracy to within two milligrams per deciliter to determine the quantity of insulin needed. Now we can mimic the body's design by checking our blood sugar or blood glucose. And so how can we mimic the design of the body? What is the body doing when we eat? It measures the glucose amounts. Glucose comes from carbohydrates. So we should count our carbohydrate intake. In other words, count carbs. We've heard that term before. Now here's a good thing that I, I, I saw a little video at D-Life. It had to do with checking in pairs. And you do this, this is from a, a D-Life video from 11 years ago, but it's still relevant today, and I want you to see it. And this is an example of how you can go about determining different kinds of foods that really affect your blood sugars. We began to put forward this idea of testing in pairs. Testing, not single tests, but pairs of tests so that people could actually begin to see that their personal actions were really having an immediate effect. I'm hoping this idea of just testing in pairs and doing it consistently over time is going to help them to uncover patterns that will help them to see how their own actions are influencing their blood sugars, and I bet automatically will give them ideas about what, what positive actions they're going to want to take in the future. Hello. Hi, Selena. So we'll be seeing two patients today, and I actually asked them to consider some event they would like to investigate and to check their blood sugars immediately before and then afterwards and to do that consistently for seven days in a row and write down the results. I chose to, to do exercising at least 20 minutes a day for um, a week and I did that because I hate exercise but doing this would help me do it every day. I've been on medication for almost two years and I wanted to see if it was working as well for me today as it was when I first got put on it. What did you think of doing this for? I noticed that I didn't die <laughs> after only exercising 20 minutes. It's a very small start for me, um, but actually I felt energized and I was looking forward to the next time because I, I realized I had more energy mm -hmm. after I worked out just for about 20 minutes. And when you think about the, the numbers that you were saying, anything in particular strike you about what you discovered? They were drastic. They, they decreased a lot. Huh. Um, I tended to have high numbers in the evening, it seemed like, and my numbers went down significantly. And you took a look at this and said, my body is behaving the way it should be behaving under this medication. So medication is working. But when my numbers are high, I could definitely just bring it down. This like 183 to, one, to 143, mm -hmm. that's pretty drastic. If, if I wanted to know, should I be eating this kind of food, you know, under these circumstances, I know within two hours whether that was a good choice or not. Yeah. Incredibly motivating. And you're thinking about that, where does that, where does this take you now? Where, where do you go with this? I would actually like to do testing in pairs in other areas. Mm -hmm. Like, perhaps my, my lunch meal, or when I exercise in the morning versus in the evening. Testing in pairs is so much more meaningful, especially since I can see the results. I know it's just a number. I know it's just a number, but I don't like checking my blood sugars because I'm afraid of what's gonna happen. And after the very first time, one, two, three, I was excited to check my blood sugars because the first time it went down 40. That oh, is amazing. So I was like, what can I do next time? You don't actually just make a difference and make a difference pretty quickly. Yeah. So here's some guidelines. They come from the jo Joshua Diabetes Center. Fasting and before breakfast should be 70 to 130. Normal is less than 100. Well, I want to be a normal person. 
so I want to get less than 100. That's my goal. Before lunch, supper, and snacks, 70 to 130. And by the way, 70, anything below 70 is called hypoglycemia. That's getting low. So uh, that's on the lower end of the scale there. Two hours after starting meals, that is, you eat your first bite, not when you're through eating. When you start eating a meal, that's when you start your timing. If you're two hours, it should be 160 or less after two hours. And then normal people who function properly, everything's working properly, be 140, less than 140. Bedtime, 90 to 150. Normal is less than 120. And you usually drop during the night. So lifestyle changes are important. Doing the essentials. Uh, getting motivated. Understanding the basics. And remember, as we continue through this, we're going to look at these 17 wise ways to daily outsmart diabetes. And we're going to start with exercise next time. And continue to look at the wisdom that applies to all of that. So thank you for coming. Look forward to seeing you next time. Okay. Good job.